So what do you do in the next phase of that angle, the next phase of that match? Do you pull out two tampons? Um, do you pull out a bloody tampon, not being crass? But I mean, honestly, like, where do you go with that? I mean, it's, it's aside from being ridiculously and absurdly tasteless, uh, you know, there's done properly. Our business is supposed to be a chess game, you know? So, you know, I move my rook, you move your rook, I move my knight, you move your knight, correspondence and so on and so forth, pushing this, this program forward. You know, I, I, am familiar with this and I, I saw somebody asking well, how's it different than a, you know somebody pulling brass knuckles or a foreign object out of their tights a man uh, first of all not everything has to be defined by political correctness let's just start with that uh, you know not everything is if you say something against it that suddenly you're now anti-female and misogynistic or whatever else uh, let's just start with that um, so the difference of me reaching into my tights and pulling out, say, a pair of brass knuckles or a foreign object, uh, or this incident, the difference is, uh, one, one's a pair of brass knuckles or a foreign object. The other is a pretty ridiculous uh, uh, and, and extraordinarily crass uh, item. A feminine napkin, whatever it is you want to call the damn thing. Um, you know, so to somehow liken those two together, uh, I guess would be the same thing as saying, well, if I wasn't if I pull out a gun or I pull out a pencil, um, there's a considerable difference. And to then say, well, it's the same thing, and just sort of try to use linear logic, which anybody's ever passed eighth grade. Uh, uh, math knows that linear logic is full of faults, but using linear logic, even if you want to go that route, uh, to try to analogize this with something else from wrestling uh, in the past of, of say, a heel pulling out a pair of brass knuckles or a, uh, uh, a foreign object. Uh, do, I, I, I think it's incredibly condescending to sit there and try to make the argument uh, or even give a lesson that there's a little bit of a difference of a pair of brass knuckles or a foreign object as opposed to a tampon. Um, and then to shove it in somebody's mouth. Uh, you know, it's obvious that with the shoving it in the mouth that, that it was intended to be one thing and one thing only, uh, a shock value. Um, and, you know, I've done a lot of things in my career that, you know, that were written into the angle that, you know, sometimes I did on my own. But now, speaking as a father, you know, when you look at the, the demographics and say the WWE and you see that this, their number one demographic is way up there in years, no longer the kids. But there's still a lot of kids in that audience. Uh, you know, as somebody who would cut the fucking music and, and things like that and, and, you know, say some pretty vulgar things in my promos that were gauged towards a, a you know, primarily uh, adult audience. As a father now, I can tell you definitively that if my kids were watching something on TV and saw that, not only would they no longer ever watch that program again, but I'd be writing some serious emails and letters to the network. Um, so where do you go with it? I mean, that, from a purely performance standpoint, What's the next phase? Where do you, how do you top that? Like I said, you pull out two or three, then make them bloody. Uh, uh, then should a guy come on in a segment after that and pull out a used condom? And I mean, like, again, like, you see how fast this devolves into ridiculousness. Um, but, you know, again, this isn't just taking a pointed jab at that. I mean, we're talking at a time when we, we see guys selling for quote unquote, the invisible man in the ring, uh, or selling a guy's penis in the ring. I, I, I mean, if this is really where my business has gone, then that's not the evolution of wrestling. That's the de-evolution of wrestling, you know, because any of us back then could have just said, Hey, here, whip it out. Right. 
where do you go from there? What's the next, next? What's the next big thing that you're going to do? Um, you know, so you very quickly paint yourself into a corner. You know, ours is not just a question of getting people talking, because if that's the case, and we could do that very easily, I'll just, next time I go to the ring, I'm going to pull out a knife and stab my opponent right in the middle of the ring. That will sure so get people talking, but what's the next thing aside from me going to jail? What's the next thing? If you were going to come out and wrestle me after I did that, would you want to step in the ring with me after I stabbed the last guy? What's the next thing? Where do you go from there? And if it's just, well, I hadn't thought that far ahead, then you're a dumbass because you've now painted yourself into a very serious corner, one that's impossible to escape from. From this point forward, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this person is going to always be compared to that lowest common denominator. So if she goes out and has a five-star match, the people are going to say, yeah, but remember when she did this? Um, because where do you go from there? How do you top it? How do you keep people talking? Um, you know, uh, again, we just off the top of my head, I mean, we can come up with a million scenarios how we can get people talking, right? If I go out there and, you know, pull out a gun and shoot you in the middle of the ring, or if while you're walking into the building, I just run you over with a car. Um, no, it's going to get people talking for about 30 seconds. And then every, the, the, in the 31st second, they're going to say, well, it's been nice knowing Shane Douglas. He's going to prison. Um, you know, it's, it's not the getting people talking. It's keeping them talking. And if you can't come up with that next big phase, that next thing you're going to do, uh, and you can't top that last thing you've done, and I'm going to say, I find it pretty hard to think you can top something this silly. Um, that's not a misogynistic statement. That's not saying it's okay for men as opposed to women. I'm saying it in mass. Uh, the invisible man, the, the penis selling, and all the rest of this stuff has gotten to a point where what's the next thing? How do you keep the fans coming back? If if it's just, I'm going to give you the the most ridiculously extreme thing that can ever be done. Okay, well then how do I get you back the week after I give you that? And, you know, none of them can answer the question because none of them have thought of the question because none of them understand the question, because none of them understand the industry. It's not just the question of, let's just go out there and shock everybody, because that's easy enough to do with the examples I just gave and a million other things we come up with. What do you do after that? What is the next thing that keeps the people coming back? How is it that a guy named Dusty Rhodes, who certainly doesn't look like an athlete, uh, uh, Certainly didn't have the best body in the business, but son of a bitch, goddamn, was he compelling to watch. He was electric to watch. And every week you watched him, he went out there and did something that mesmerized you to come back the following week. And the week after that, and the week after that, and the week after that. Uh, for, what, 30, 40 years? Uh was it just a question of going out there and saying, okay, let's just do something so crass, so perverse, uh, so outside the bounds of normal normalcy that will shock everybody and get them talking because then, like I said, what do you do next to bring them back the next time? And, you know, I, I'm going to say that two tampons isn't twice as, uh, wow as one um and three wouldn't be any different than one or two so where do you go with it you know so you know i saw you know some of where taz had posted online saying hey you got people talking keep it up or something like that uh keep at it or whatever well again how do you keep at it <laughs> what's what's the next thing you're going to pull out two, three, then four, then five or six, and then maybe add some blood to one when, before you do it, or fake blood, whatever, you know. At, at some point, it's you've reached the bottom of the barrel. And uh, 
to me, I, I, would, I would say try a little harder, you know, work a little harder at it uh, to get people doing the wild thing because it can be done. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to pull out a gun or a knife or a condom or a tampon. Um, work a little harder at it. And if you do, you'll be amazed at the places you can take it. But that, that kind of stuff, I think, is the, the kind of thing that has devolved wrestling to a point where people call it a cartoon. Uh, now they're called, I guess, a pornography magazine. Uh, or worse. Um, but how many parents are going to want their kids watching something like that? Because if you can't get the parents get letting their kids watch it, uh, and I would dare say there's probably a lot of people out there that don't want to watch that, whether they're a kid 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 years old. Um, you're turning people off. And for the one or two who might want to take up the argument that, wow, that was fantastic that was so cutting edge it was so creative i would say there's probably going to be exponentially more people that say the counter argument and again where do you go from there what's the next step up how do you continue pushing that forward um it's a fail on all levels to me it's a failure of creativity it's lazy uh it's it's crass and vulgar, and and crass and vulgar in and of themselves, uh, to me, is, especially coming from ECW, right? But again, we were gauged towards adults, uh, hence the one a.m. two a.m. time slots. Uh, but even then, there were times, believe it or not, where you know, you know, Francine and I would say, ah, we're not going to say that. Like that, that's that's a little bit too far outside the boundaries. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it, and I can already hear the counter arguments. So what about when Kamado want to lay a dance the top? Well, the difference of that was it was a, a, probably close to midnight when that happened. A building full of twenty some twenty thirty year old some people, uh, mostly men, and the power went out. Uh, you know, so it wasn't like Paul sat back and said, "Hey, let's cut the power at that time, and then we'll send Kamado want to lay out and have her dance top the ECW arena." Um, you can already hear the counter arguments coming back. And to those people, they're, it's, it's the same thing we're seeing like in our national politics. I refuse your facts. Facts don't matter anymore. I like it. It makes me feel good. So that trumps your facts. Um, we're, we're just in a place where I guess, you know, and with the internet now, everybody has an equal voice, right? So you, you watch within 24 hours of this episode airing, they're going to see people say, well, what about this? Or what about that? And Shane's misogynistic or, you know, what a typical old timer thinking this or that, right? You, you can already hear the counter arguments. I'll stick with my, my original comment that I've said how many times in this piece. Where do you go next with that to keep selling tickets, to keep drawing ratings, to keep bringing people to the building? Because at some point, once you give them all that, what's the next thing? Let's send a couple ladies out naked, a couple guys out naked. I got it. Let's send a mixed tag out, both of them naked. And let's just let them grab each other by the sex organs and throw each other all around the ring. But at some point, you reach the end point where there's nothing more you can do. And if it's just vulgarity for vulgarity's sake and crassness for crassness' sake, then you reach the end of the line pretty quickly. And, you know, I don't know this girl. Uh, if I've ever met her, I don't remember. I, I'm not trying to be condescending in any way. I just, the name doesn't sound familiar to me uh, as having met somebody like that. But if I did, I would love to have a discussion with her, trying to explain to her what I'm trying to explain right here, uh, that, you know, your, our job as performers is to not just get this segment over that we're in tonight, whether it's in an independent show, on a show on television, uh, at a huge show, uh, at WrestleMania. Our job is to entertain for that segment, but then to give the promotion and the fans something more to look forward to. 
what's the next thing? And I would dare say that nobody that's making the argument in support of this can answer that question for me. Oh, they can give me an answer. Uh, and I could quickly cut it to pieces. There's only so far you can go with that kind of stuff. And no matter how far you play it out, the way I, my industry has typically always played it out and d- done so with incredible veracity, uh, it has done it in a way that it's drawn tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars over the decades, as opposed to one, two, three, or four moves down the road before you're finally out of moves. You can't do anything else. And once you've taken it that far, you can't now pull it back and say, well, now let's just go back to, like, for instance, we had the naked man and woman scenario, right? What do you now do the week after that? Okay, well, now let's put everybody in tights and boots again and put them in the ring, and we'll just take it back to wrestling again. Well, who wants to watch that if they've seen a man and woman grabbing each other by those sex organs, <laughs> right? So, you know, I mean, you can see how quickly you reach a brick wall. And, uh, you know, it's anybody's job in any, any entertainment form is to keep the fans coming back because if, you know, if you're an actor, you don't want to just have a blockbuster on your resume. You want to have a blockbuster that launches you to several more blockbusters to keep that money coming in and keep bringing fans back to the theater to keep selling those tickets. Uh, wrestling is no different. Our job is to keep those fans coming back show to show, venue to venue, program to program, uh, angle to angle, storyline to storyline. Not just, okay, now tonight we're going to throw the nuclear bomb in the middle of the ring and nobody will ever be able to top it, including us. So at the end of this program, we'll just put a great big the end. Thank you for your patronage. We'll see you someplace down the road because there's no place else to go with it. You painted yourself into a corner.